fantastic. We've got a great lineup of uh, people playing, and there's a, a young man. He hasn't come in yet, he's just driven up from Liverpool, so when he comes in, I'll give you a... I'll give him a nice big round of applause. He's out there, he's got a blue t-shirt on. Come in, sir. There he is, give him a nice big round of applause. Just all the way from Liverpool, you know what? I know you feel embarrassed and all about it, so it's okay. What do you think of our great drummers? Bob Mace on the left hand side. And James Walker on the right. Big round of applause, please. And Rod, our multi talented percussionist there. This is Rod's sixth time, isn't it, Rod? Rod's six, yeah, yeah. We did, this is my 27th time. I uh, started doing these. I was walking out of Alder Hay Children's Hospital. In 1983, and all the uh, all the kids started crying as a natural sort of uh, reaction when the mums and dads were leaving the ward. And I said to someone, uh, well, "Why don't you build a radio unit and play some songs for the kids?" And he looked at me and said, "That'll cost about ten grand." And I said, "Ten grand, all right, yeah. I'll get you ten grand." Then. So I got a lot of drummers together, and I just uh, it went in the Liverpool Echo, and I just said. Uh, Who'd like to play? And there was that many drummers, we had to hold it for 24 hours. It started at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it finished at 10 o'clock the following morning. And just to make it a bit of a novel, a uh, bit of a different thing to do, I decided to set the drums on the top deck of the ferry sailing over the Mersey. And I didn't want to call it Drums Across the Mersey, because Jerry Marsden had a great record out called Ferry Across the Mersey. So I decided to call it Drums Over the Mersey. So it's Drums Over the Mersey, it was 24 hours, and that was all for all the right kids hospital, and we built a radio unit for them. So uh, here we go, so many years later, from 1983, and we're here doing same stuff, with some fantastic players. So give yourselves a nice big round of applause, please. This is going on to half three. And then we've got a special lineup of young ladies turning up. When we get ready for the raffle, they're going to sing all songs from the 50s. And they've got these special frocks on them all the rest of it. So I'll just pass you back to the guys. Can we have a bass player then, please? This is bass player has been playing for nearly 45 minutes. Thank you. When did it all start? Oh, just over 20 years ago. I had to have an operation on my neck to have a lump removed. When the doctor said to me it was benign, I felt over the moon about it. In my recovery, I went into Bournemouth Town Centre and just seen all these women running. And it was a race for life. It was called running for life, you know. And I said to my missus, I think I'll do drumming for life. It was that simple, you know. I don't do any running, so... Uh, so I got a load of drummers together, and because uh, I worked for Bournemouth Youth Service at the time, uh, and then I, I just found a charity in Bournemouth called uh, the Youth Cancer Trust, which is a house in Burnaby Roads, about 250 yards from the beach, and they give opportunities to uh, any youngsters with cancer to go and stay there free of charge. So, uh, but they rely on donations because the government don't give them any money or so. You know, so. The last 16 years I've been doing Drummer for Life for the Youth Cancer Trust. I was in their, in their office in December, just chatting away, and I said, I'm, I've got another Drummer, Drummer for Life booth. This, and the lady who was in charge of it said, uh, how many have you done now? I said, well, I've done 15, this will be my 16th for the charity. And she said, oh, hang on a minute. So she got all her stuff together and they all went in the boardroom. They come out a couple of minutes later and just said, uh, would you like to be an ambassador for our charity? And I said, well, what, what do I have to do? And he said, nothing. You've been, do <laughs> you've been doing it for 16 years.
Okay, I, I used to, when I became unemployed after the uh, the recession in Liverpool, I was teaching drums at the Merseyside Trades Union Community and Unemployed Resource Centre. Uh, I was unemployed, so um, I wrote a course, it was called, it was for the young unemployed, and it was called Beat the Drums to Beat the Toll. Uh, all the youngsters had to bring UB40 cards in, and they, I bought the tea, and milk and they bought the sugar and it got on really well and a lot of them guys are in major bands now and everything at the trade union centre is recorded on television and the guy said to me excuse me joking can you come and have a look at this this is going on at Bournemouth you know so I went into this room and uh, there's a Tory party conference at the BIC Bournemouth International Centre and a guy on a microphone said, uh, this town's been invaded by all these people from Liverpool. There's plenty of jobs, but they won't get jobs. He just want to lie on the beach all day. When he was leaving the stage, the compere announced his name, Greg Archdale, and about two people clapped him. And he ran back on stage and made the biggest mistake of his life. He shouted, any scouts who turns up at my house, I'll give you a job. Well, he said that on the Monday, and on the Thursday, 67 of us turned up outside his front door in Charminster, the uh, trade union laid the uh, coaches on. The coaches couldn't get down the road, so we all walked down this road in Charminster. And the police inspector knocked on the guy's front door. Always remember, he had like a drop reed in the door, big glass sheet of pain. He come downstairs, he must have thought, God, the milkman's early. And when he opened the door, he had 67 fellas yelling, give us a job. All the lights went on in the streets and the police said we can do you for loitering. So the trade union guy said just walk up and down with placards with gives a job on. So uh, that's what we did. We walked to the job centre from Charminster to uh, Old Christ Church Road. Job centre opened at 9 o'clock. The only jobs available were like seasonal jobs, dishwashing and things like that. So uh, 66 of them went back to Liverpool but I stayed here I thought I'm gonna give it a go, you know, and uh, it was the best decision I made. So say, I've been here ever since. <laughs>
to continue uh, doing many things at Absolute Music with all the same people. It's, it's quite amazing, really, because Jamie and uh, a few of the lads have been coming. How many times have you played? About six, seven, eight? Yeah, yeah something like that. So it's yeah. great. Everyone comes back, and uh, it'll be nice to be organise some maybe in about six months' time uh, to get some uh, waterproof uh, sleeping bags for the homeless. So thank you very much, Alan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. I'm lost for words.